Chinese medicine advice about eating, about eating habits, let's put it that way. There's a saying, the pancreas loves a hundred steps after every meal. What that means is, or let's explain what that means. The pancreas is directly related to the muscles. I've said this before, but each one of the organs are directly related to different tissues. For the pancreas, it's the muscles. When you move your muscles, you're moving your pancreas and waking it up. So after you eat a meal, if you go for a nice leisurely walk, you're moving your muscles, waking up your pancreas, and helping it to digest because then the pancreas chi is alive and able to work. However, if you overdo it, you overuse your muscles, then you'll overuse your pancreas chi, then you'll lose digestive energy and not be able to digest your meals as well. So don't go on like a big hike or go running after you eat, but go for like a nice 30, 20, 30 minute walk around the neighborhood. Yeah. The time of day to eat. Did we talk about this? When is our digestive system strongest and weakest? Huh? Not in this class. Not in this class? Oh, you heard it in that other class that I taught, that little snippet, yeah. that like 10 minute lecture. Okay, so please don't answer this one. <laughs> so when do you think the digestion is the strongest and the weakest? Morning, strongest or weakest? Or neither? Or lunchtime, strongest or weakest in you. Or dinner time, strongest or weakest in you. Lunch the strongest. Dinner time's the strongest. Okay. Lunch is the strongest. Okay. So we have two for lunch, one for dinner. Who says? Uh, what time do you think is the weakest? Dinner and night. In the morning, okay. <laughs> so, great. This is why I asked this question. So there's two different points of view. There's the Chinese medicine point of view, and I bring in the Ayurvedic point of view, the medicine of India. The Chinese medicine point of view says that the morning is the strongest and the night is the weakest. Because morning is yang time, and night is yin time. So we eat with, our body is in rhythm with the sun, the cycles of the sun and the moon. So we want to eat with the sun. But Ayurvedic medicine says it's slightly different. It says that it's strongest midday and weakest at night, and the morning is in between. I agree with Ayurvedic point of view, and here's why. When is the sun at its highest? Midday. So when do you think the yang of our body is the highest? Midday. So that's why I think that's the time that we should be eating our biggest meals. Breakfast should be in between medium and dinner should be light. The reason that Chinese medicine says the morning is the strongest is because of the flow of the qi through the channels. Do we talk about the time frames of flow of qi? So there's always two-hour periods for each of the organs that the qi flows through it the, the strongest. The stomach is from 7 to 9 a.m. That's when the qi flows the strongest. And so for that reason, that's why they say that's the best time to eat. I go with the big macro point of view that it's more with the sun because our body's in rhythm with that. What about fluids during meals? Should we drink a lot of fluids during meals or a little? Little. Why? Because it um, makes it harder to digest. Yeah. Why? So why does it make it harder to digest? Dilution. Dilution. You're diluting your digestive enzymes. So it's very American to like have that big cup of cold water and pound three, four glasses of that during a meal. Right? So common. Whereas when you go to a Chinese restaurant, what do they traditionally serve? Now they do a lot of ice water because they've adapted to American culture. But traditionally, what do you think they would do? They, hot tea, right? And it's a tea specifically that's a digestive aid. How many cups of those little cups of tea do you have in one of those meals? 
Yeah, four or five, you know? That's a tiny bit of fluid compared to four or five big glasses of cold water. So every time I go to the restaurant, <laughs> I always ask them, and they're about to bring that cold water. I see them come before they even talk to me. And I say, oh, that's okay. We actually don't need that. Would you mind bringing us hot water with lemon? Right? That lemon is also a digestive aid, but the heat warms our digestion, so we're helping to support our digestive fire. So the other thing is that when you eat, you should only eat. A lot of Chinese medicine students don't heed this warning because they are so busy. They will just bring their food to class and eat in class while they're taking notes. We talked about this in the first or second class, but the spirit of the pancreas is the E or the intellect. The E depends on the pancreas chi in order to function. That's our ability to understand what's going on. So if you're distracted when you're eating, for instance, watching television or studying or whatever it is, what you're doing is you're depleting your pancreas chi because that pancreas chi has to support your intellect. Instead, just focus on eating, have a nice light conversation, nothing serious. <laughs> Don't want to talk about world events or <laughs> the awful things that are happening. You want to have nice, light conversation so that your E or your intellect is not being or is not using your pancreas chi so that it stays there and it's ready for your digestion. Hold on. Put your cell phones away. Yeah. No looking up emails while you're eating. <laughs> no eating at your desks at work. I just had a conversation with a guy who like, yeah, we have these employees, and every time at lunchtime I go to talk to them, and their secretary always says to me, oh, you know, they're out of, out of walk. It's a son, a father and a son. Oh, they're doing their post-lunch walk. And he's like, wow, and, and, and this was after I just told him the same piece of information. He's like, yeah, I just sit there and I eat at my desk. People are coming into my office and we're having meetings. And I think to myself, well, why don't I just go for walks? But I never do it. <laughs> So, you know, my job as the health advocate, as an acupuncturist, would be like, well, maybe you can do that. Why couldn't you? So, if you're meeting, like, a friend for lunch and you haven't seen each other for a long time, and you're actually eating, you either don't talk or say, like, they like things. But after you finish eating, then you could, like, go into the really heavy stuff. <laughs> Better to go into the heavy stuff. Well... So you don't necessarily want it right after because right after you're still digesting. Okay. Maybe so if in an ideal world, have light conversation at lunch, eat, go for a walk, mm -hmm. and then talk about the heavy stuff. Okay. <laughs> but that's in an ideal world. That sounds harder to do. <laughs>